Social construction happens in a three-part process. So everything that has been socially constructed has gone through this process. So stage one, you externalize uh, your ideas, your thoughts, uh, things you want to get out into the world. So step one, externalization, that's you putting something out there. Uh, the most primary vehicle for that would be language. You know, you can make a, write a book, you can tell somebody a, a story or uh, make up a new word, uh, but by no means is language the only way that you externalize the ideas that are inside of you. It could be through your fashion, it could be through something you make or build, a product, a service. Uh, a dance, it could be something symbolic, um, but in any of the ways in which humans uh, take the concepts and ideas and feelings and values that are inside them, and they try to put them out into the social world, we call that externalization. Now, once those things are out there, uh, we're moving to stage two, which is objectivation. Basically, something takes on the feeling of being an object, not just something subjective to you, right inside of you uh but now that it's been externalized you're hoping that it takes on a life of its own uh so think of any social institution that you've been a part of schools or the criminal justice system or the economy or the political system right the, the, these are very grand scale institutions um, they seem bigger than us, right? There was higher education before you were born and there will be higher education institutions after you die. Uh, you don't have to choose to participate in higher education, but it is a reality. It, it has a kind of social facticity to it um, that is bigger than you, right? And so uh, now there, there are some things that never fully achieve objectivation. Maybe you try to make up a new word or dance trend on TikTok or something. And so you're, you're externalizing this unit of culture, this, these ideas or feelings or whatever it is you're expressing. You're putting it out there into society and it may never take on a life of its own, right? It may never objectify, uh, become something that is, you know, uh, crystallized and bigger than you um, that other people can look at. Um, and ultimately, the, you know, this term objectivation, it means that it is something that others can look at and objectively understand what it's about. Now, certainly there can be misunderstandings, right? Somebody does a dance move and you think they're, you know, having a stroke or something. Uh, so it's not that there can't be um, accidents in interpretation, but if that dance move really catches on, goes viral, uh, becomes a sensation, uh, and then years later it's being taught in dance classes and, you know, take like the waltz or something, right? That, that is fully objectivated at this point. Now, uh, say you grow up uh, in dance class. We'll just stick with this example. Uh, or you're always around people who love dancing. And so you're witnessing this dance all the time. Uh, and you might just take it, you might just start to, to move in that way because that's just what you do when you're happy or something, right? Uh, that's internalization. That's the th step three. That's the third part is where the world, social world is full of these objectivated units of culture uh, from small scales like words or new ideas or uh, new little trends all the way up to the big scale uh, long-term social institutions. Um, but the things that are out there in the world that you repeatedly, habitually come in contact with, you internalize. Uh, you start to see it as normal, as part of everyday life. Uh, you take it for granted. It's just how it is. Red light means stop. Green light means go. You don't really spend time thinking about that. I mean, it could have been blue and uh, purple, right? But why did we pick these? I don't know. But now, you know, you're a kid. You play play red light, green light. One means stop. One means go, right? So these things start to uh, internalize into you as just obvious. Uh, and then they it, it structures who you are. It structures how you see the world. Um, and ultimately, it structures the things that you then put back out into the world. Uh, maybe you're, you're painting and you want one to be green and one to be red. And then somehow that represents to you action and non-action or something uh, because of, of red light, green light. Uh, how did you make that connection? Because you've internalized something that was objectivated and now you're externalizing something back out. So even though I've explained these in a kind of sequential model, externalization, objectivation, internalization, they're actually happening simultaneously in a kind of cyclical pattern. There is not one that happens before the other. I mean, realistically, if we were gonna talk about chronology, uh, when you're a baby, you're not externalizing much, you're internalizing. So if we, if we truly wanna to try to get technical about a, a 
chronological order, it's probably internalization uh, before you start to recognize objectivation, before you're finally able to externalize. Um, but as adults, it's happening in this ongoing cycle. Um, and so that is the process laid out by uh, Peter Berger and Thomas Luckman in their 1966 book, The Social Construction of Reality. Um, and that is a, a helpful tool for thinking about this process of how things become socially constructed.